after a few missions trips over to India, I really found God placing on my heart a, uh, a stirring and a passion for international students and to care for those that were coming to the universities to actually uh, study and stuff that were left on their own. Uh, we were getting a few come into church that were um, just broken and hurt and alone and struggling with finance. And we thought, well, hey, let's try and do something that stops them getting to this point and create a program that sees them cared, supported and uplifted and uh, believed, believed in. So we created a program over five years ago called Unicare. I felt that God was saying to me, care for these international students. Really care for them, like support them and just be there for them. Create a sense of family around them. Um, and I was listening to uh, Jay Johns and he was saying at one conference we went to that, hey, you've got to look at missions and uh, evangelism in a different way nowadays. And he says, sometimes you have to give them a place to belong before you see them saved. And it's the total opposite of church sometimes. In church we say, like, hey, they've got to be saved before they belong. So Unicare has gone on the reverse and it's given them a place to belong and then we've seen them saved. So we're touching on the resources and the things that we have as a church to meet the needs of the students. So if you think about it, those international students, they come out, they don't know the, they don't know the area, they struggle with finances, employment, they don't know the language and they've got no family and then you add the pressures of uh, their family of doing well in their studies and you get this student that's isolated, broken and doesn't know what to do. So we've created a program, Unicare, which cares for them, that believes them and brings a sense of family around them. How we started out first is uh, one semester, it just started in March and we thought, hey, let's do a connection dinner. So we ran a connection dinner um, at a restaurant. We hired out a restaurant and ran uh, a dinner for them. We advertised it on campus, all over campus. And we thought, great, there's about 800 flyers went out and we were on there day, day in, day out, handing out flyers. We got 13 people to the dinner, six were leaders. And we thought, well, hey, yeah, this is good. This is all right. You know, first time up, this is all right. But what we did is we mentioned about Unicare, what we were doing, a few connect groups and a few day trips and that that we were doing. And, and one young guy came in and uh, he wasn't part of what we were doing or heard about it. He was just there for the food, but he was an international student. And we sort of got him to come over. His name was Javed. And we got him to come over and make connection with him. And uh, it, it was a great time and got his details. And we had an international speaker that Sunday. So it was strategically planned that this dinner was on the Thursday before the Sunday and the weekend. And uh, on the Friday, I called him up and asked him to come down. Did he want to come down on the Saturday to this international speaker? He comes down to the speaker. The praise is going off. I bring him to the front row and he's listening to the speaker. No worries. He speaks about Christ and about Christ. And he's the, the Savior and all this. He does an altar call. Java doesn't respond. But at the end of it, I sort of turned to him and said, hey, what did you think? And he goes, I've never seen anything like this. This is fantastic. And I said, so what do you think about what he was saying about Jesus? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And so I said, well, do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And he goes, yeah, yeah. So I took him over with a friend of mine, Reuben. We led him through a prayer and he accepted Jesus into his heart. From that first time, I knew that this is of God, that there's people there to be reached for God. If you look at it in the chapter in Mark, chapter 6, uh, Jesus feeds the multitudes and it says that he saw the multitudes and had compassion on them. And he said, they were like sheep without a shepherd. Now that's how my heart breaks for international students and for in and students in general. That, you know, we've got to do something about these students. We've got to reach them. They're, they're like sheep without a shepherd. Someone has to lead them and teach them and guide them. When they come out to Australia and study, there's an avenue there that you might be missing because there's people there that are broken, that are lost, that are alone, that need people to come around them. So that's Unicare. So we strategically plan a dinners then, um, do a dinner, and then we have an event that they can go to, come to after that. So the second one we did, we had 30 people at the Connection Dinner. The next year we started it and did it March again. We had about 50. And then, and then the second semester, we had 80 people. The restaurant only held 80 people. And we were turning people away. And from that, what we did is we created connect groups from the dinners. So it went from the dinners to connect groups. Um, and then what we would do is outreaches on campus, big events on campus, where we would have anywhere from 180 students to over 100. I think on average, we've had about 150 at our outreaches on campus, where we go in and we do like uh, Unicare's Got Talent, 
bring in all these different acts and that, and then we give a gospel presentation. We see them saved and given their hands. And every Sunday at church, we're seeing several international students come to church. Um, we've had nearly, um, this year, nearly 40 to 50 international students come on a Sunday and filled out welcome cards. Uh, we've had students uh, that have been here, that have been saved here, that go back. We had one girl, Stephanie, she got saved here and baptized here, went back home. We get an email about Stephanie and uh, she spoke to her mum about the gospel. Her mum's accepted Christ and her mum gets baptized. Another guy, Philip, uh, he just got, uh, went back home. We get an email. We weren't too sure whether he was a Christian or not, but he'd come and love it. Um, he hooked up with some other Christians back home, back in his home country. And uh, he says he's going to church and he's uh, following the ways of God. These are the results of us just meeting the needs of international students, being there for international students. We've had to turn people away who want to be part of the team because it is a place, you can't go in and Bible bash them. That's not what Unicare is about. Unicare was about caring for international students. They can see people, if you've got an agenda a mile off, that just want to have a motive, that you just want to see them saved. You've got to, we've got to have this, uh, this vision of seeing them belong and then seeing them saved. So anyone who comes in who's wanted to just Bible bash them, the students, they know that something's up, that you're in there for a specific reason to see them saved. Um, so we, what we do is we just give them that family environment, we believe in them, build small groups, connect groups, and from that, strategically from that, you go your dinner with your connect groups, um, becomes into, a connect, uh, into your small groups where relationship is built. From that, they go into a Sunday service, they're invited to a Sunday service, or they attend an outreach service on campus, or saved. So it's a really great model that um, it, we've had lots of fruit with. It hasn't happened just by uh, a lot of hard work. It's happened through prayer, through fasting, through uh, following our own uh, relationships with God. I think everyone's got this specific uh, mandate on them and purpose on them and desire it in you. That's my one of mine, was to care for these international students. It wasn't the whole campus, it was just international students. But following that and being obedient and just stepping out in faith and creating something gives you an avenue of, for God to move. Uh, it's also through the belief of your senior pastors and vision of your senior pastors. They've got to be behind you 110%. Otherwise, you're just uh, battling against a brick wall going... Um, into the university on your own and also we've got a church which is multicultural so when these students come to our church they fit in it's not like a church where they don't fit in you know if you have someone who's from overseas come to your church and it's not a, a multicultural church they might not fit in no one will go over and make them feel welcome or a sense of family or anything like that will uh, reach out to them where our church is at the moment so it's a great avenue for them to that once they come they're seeing uh, people that are always coming, meeting them, saying hello, giving it, come back to my house for dinner, building that relationship. And from that, we're seeing them saved. So Unicare has been on an awesome journey so far, and it's happened with an amazing team. We've got a great team. We've had it around 30 people on the team, and we're of the one heart, the one vision, the one purpose, and the one goal.